Today we're talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe of Federal Reserve Strategies. That's right, interest rates, repo markets, and quantitative easing are all teaming up to fight a common enemy. The strong dollar. The one asset consistently growing in value during this period of economic turmoil is the good old fashioned American greenback. And conveniently enough, it's very easy to invest in. Just don't invest. Of course, this leads to all sorts of problems. Most immediately, a shortage of cash in financial markets, as people sell their assets for dollars to weather the storm. There is a literal shortage of American dollars right now across the globe as people rush to get their hands on those greenbacks. If cash is the best possible investment you can make right now, well, that's going to make getting a loan a lot harder from a bank. To get me to part with my precious and scarce dollars, well, you're going to have to pay a higher interest rate. Enter the Federal Reserve, whose goal it is to turn the dollar from a collector's item back to the good old fashioned exchangeable currency it was a month ago. Now I talk about the federal funds rate a lot on this channel as an abstract concept. It's a rate that controls all the other interest rates. Just take my word for it, it's very complicated. Since I'm locked in my house and Congress is really dragging their feet on this whole stimulus bill thing, well, I have the time to dig a little deeper into this. So what is the federal funds rate actually? Well, the federal funds rate refers to the interest rate that banks charge other banks for lending them excess cash from their reserve balances on an overnight basis. Now, if you find yourself screaming at the TV right now, wait, that sounds just like the repo market rate. Heck yeah, it does. The puzzle pieces are coming together. I hope you're as excited as I am right now. The repo markets are the pipelines by which banks can make overnight loans to each other to ensure that everybody stays in compliance with America's reserve requirements and nobody gets in trouble. Wow, for such a cool name like repo, that definition's a bit of a letdown. So who cares about keeping repo rates low? Oh no, overnight loans are getting slightly predatory? What, banks can dish it out but they can't take it? Well, banks are playing a daily game of hot potato with the market. They loan out money, depositors take out money, and people put in savings. The cash flows in and out. When the clock stops at the end of each day though, the bank better have a certain amount of their reserves in cash or else they lose. Before their cash gets counted though, if they're below that reserve requirement, they can reach out to other banks who might have extra cash lying around and get an overnight cash loan at the repo market rate. Now, if there's a lot of cash lying around, then you can get cheap cash. But if everybody's tightening their own belt and barely scraping by themselves, that overnight rate goes up fast. Considering depositors are taking money out of ATMs right now at record numbers, well, that reserve requirement is at the forefront of every banker's mind. The Federal Reserve is currently in a tug of war with the repo markets in determining what the true overnight interest rate will be. This is why they totally freaked out and offered $1.5 billion in repo loans when the natural rate of those overnight loans drifted slightly above the federal funds rate earlier this month. According to a tweet by the New York Federal Reserve, because apparently everything is tweeting nowadays, these trillions of dollars in overnight Federal Reserve loans will be made at a tenth of a percent interest rate to keep the repo loans trading between the Federal Reserve targets of zero and a quarter of a percentage point of interest. Oh, 48 people heart that message as well. Neat. The problem is, if you're a bank with a daily cash outflow and you can't rely on other banks to give you overnight loans at a reasonable rate, well then you're going to start hoarding your own cash and let as little of it out as possible. This means if you want a bank loan and you're a consumer, when there's not much cash out there, well, you're going to have to pay quite the premium to be able to get banks to part with it. There's a lot banking on the repo markets. In this case, the Fed can't guarantee banks maximize their loaning potential, but they have guaranteed that banks have the opportunity to do so. So now with banks having access to cheap overnight loans, the Federal Reserve is giving them the same advice you give to a recent grad. 
Go out there, take some risks, have some fun. You're not going to make money holding those dollars in reserves. This leads us to some truly ironic statements from big banks. If the Fed expects us to bail out small businesses, they are wrong. We are not going to take undue risks. We see things much more closely than the Federal Reserve, so we are not going to risk everything because they want us to do so. It's not going to happen. How tone deaf can you be? I mean, at least don't lead with the term bailout when you're refusing to do it, big banks. Recently, the Federal Reserve has been acting like the colonel at the beginning of every Rambo movie. JP Morgan, we need you to do one last job for us. Make a bunch of pretty risky loans to people and businesses. I'm retired from that life. 2008, that was just too much of a bloodbath. Damn it, man, there's no one as irresponsible as you out there. We'll let you dip further into your capital buffers without having to halt dividend payments or bonuses. Is that enough? Even if I said yes, it'd never make a difference. It's too risky. We can't take on an inordinate amount of risk right now. We have to collect. I have a family to support, you know? I smell an Oscar for that performance. These negotiations between the Federal Reserve and the big banks on the merits of fiscal responsibility are ongoing. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Man, talk about a role reversal though. It feels like your guidance counselor telling you to lighten up a little offering you some weed. Um, regulators, is this a trap? Now this of course begs the all important question, who's taking out a loan right now? Hmm, I'd like a student loan. Wait, every school is shut down. Maybe a mortgage. I am looking for a new place to self quarantine. I know, I'll invest in my small business. Really take advantage of all the foot traffic and demand for products right now. Well, it turns out the Federal Reserve seems to think that cutting every American a check might not solve everyone's problems. The Fed wants banks to step up lending to companies whose businesses will be starved of cash because of enforced shutdowns due to the public health issue. Workers face layoffs or reduced hours as normal life is suspended across entire cities for an indefinite period of time. Of course, the Federal Reserve's plan goes beyond just lowering overnight rates in their pursuit of moving dollars from the balance sheets to the streets. They've also embarked on quite the shopping spree. It's gotten even bigger since the last time I reported on it. In a surprise announcement Monday, also known as today, before markets opened in New York, the US Central Bank said it will buy unlimited amounts of treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities to keep borrowing costs at rock bottom levels. Last week they announced $700 billion of treasury and mortgage-backed securities purchases, and as of Saturday they had already burned through half of that budget. Well, they're never going to have to worry about burning through half of their budget again as half of infinity is still infinity. So how will unlimited bond purchases drive down borrowing costs? Well, it's the same concept as the repo markets except a lot simpler. Banks generally hold on to treasury bonds because you can earn slightly more holding those than cash. And I mean, you can sell them at any time. Selling a treasury bond during a down economy should be about as easy as selling a parachute in a crashing plane. They're considered a steady and incredibly boring way to weather a storm. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, people are just moving their dollars out of the market as opposed to shifting their money from stocks to bonds. Many assets that are normally liquid, easy to buy and sell, are freezing up. Most curiously, treasury bonds, normally the bedrock of the global financial system. Unfortunately, banks are quickly learning that as good as money isn't money, especially if nobody who has cash is buying what you're selling. In this case, the Federal Reserve is coming in and saying, oh, you're struggling to sell some of your assets, huh? Well, be careful what you wish for because I'll take all of them and I'm paying cash. Where do I park my truck full of money? Of course, just like with repo markets, the Fed isn't handing out a literal blank check to Wall Street and saying, hey guys, make sure you use this money to make risky loans. 
Instead, they're buying assets as a very distressed free market price. And the last time we did this in 2008, the actual taxpayer profit on the bailout was about $350 billion, all in cash when we sold the assets years later, which was sent to the treasury to pay down the deficit. So what's the goal here? Well, it's the same as lowering repo loan rates, making sure that banks are inundated with cash rather than assets, so that they can make loans to people and companies should they choose to. The Federal Reserve has also expanded the securities they can buy to consumer debt backed securities, made up of student loans, credit card loans, auto loans, and other types of customer loans. Now That shouldn't change anything for debtors though, it just means you're now paying down your debt to Jerome Powell rather than a bank. I guess it can make you feel more patriotic when you're making those payments though. It also opened the door to the Federal Reserve buying highly rated corporate bonds for the first time in history. So there's a little snapple cap fun fact for y'all. Basically, if it's a financial asset that's not tied down and they don't need congressional approval to buy it, well, the Federal Reserve has a check with your name on it and it's made out to cash. This is all in the pursuit of the goal that all Americans can get access to cheap loans. So you don't have a job? Well, have you considered going into debt? Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Join us in a few days when I'll be making a mini-sode answering the question, where's all this money coming from? Spoiler alert, it's not the Oval Office's couch cushions. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, then join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.